1937, my grandfather Thomas Kelly was an agent for John Darling Flour Mills. The only way to convey prices then uh, and instructions were by telegram. The messages were also sent in code. The post office telegraphist had a relation who worked at the local flour mill. They were considered a security risk and may pass on the information in the telegram. Now, Thomas also owned the local hotel, so he had his own way of finding out what the competition was up to and what the alternative prices were. The improvement in communications have had a massive influence in the grain industry. The perspective I've been asked to address is that of an independent trader, storage and logistic operator. I'd like to share some of the experiences along the journey of our family company, some of the challenges, the changes and the drivers. Also the benefits to the growers and industry, what we're doing, what we think we need to do and to maintain our relevance. So this is a story about us without any graphs and an odd, odd uh, observation. Kelly Grains are a family owned and managed business uh, in southern New South Wales. Um, I've mentioned Thomas uh, already. Um, it was my father Kevin who really created uh, some momentum in the late 1950s and 60s when he arranged for the disused Tokemore World War II aerodrome hangars to be used to store wheat on behalf of the Australian Wheat Board as there was not enough storage. My brother Kevin Jr and I managed the company at various times and now my son Matthew is CEO. Our daughter Madeline is, uh, also works in the administration of the business. We act as principals and our agents uh, for some companies we've had a long association with. Um, in the past five years, we've expanded into containerisation of uh, pretty well all the grain commodities and now pa pack a significant volume for export. These containers go by rail into the Melbourne port. This has reduced the freight costs to convert, in, which converts into higher bids to the grower into our depot. It's a far cry from the 1970s when we bagged 200,000 uh, bags of wheat into Hessian bags with uh, Abu Dhabi stencil on them. There's been a strong uh, family involvement throughout the 80 years. As we've grown, younger people have joined our experienced staff to assist with new technology and introduce new perspective and ideas. We prefer to, to describe our staff as working with us, not for us. We guard our reputation for reliability, as the grain industry is one striking on the outer type of industry. As a family, we've discussed and agreed that we are custodians, not just owners. It's allowed us to look at our development, our staff and our customers with a long-term view. It's been uh, accepted logic that bigger is better and that economies of scale go up exponentially, especially in the merger and acquisition times of the 2000s. We have expanded the capacity of our grain sites to capture some of these efficiencies. However, we believe that there is an efficient frontier level to economies of scale. That is to say that there is a point where efficiencies diminish and at some point even become inefficiencies. One of the points for today's presentation is that we believe that this efficient frontier of economies of a scale, in certain aspects, is moving further and further down in scale, which is a benefit to smaller companies like us. For instance, thanks to the freer markets and technology, we're able to compete efficiently against much larger companies. The first thing to address is the rapidly changing market over the last two or three decades. It's provided plenty of challenges and also many opportunities. These opportunities have been created for the local growers and therefore by extension or association for Kelly Grains in servicing the growers. I don't wish to dwell too much in the past, but I need to mention that the grain industry has operated under many different frameworks. There have been periods of no regulation, then regulation, and then with at one stage with delivery quotas which meant farmers could only deliver a certain amount. This created a need to sell outside the regulatory framework. This became known as XX quota, black market or section 92 trading. This continued for many years until AWB decided to bring it to a head by instructing the Commonwealth Police to put the locks on five grain depots in the Riverina. What followed was a High Court case and a split decision of High Court judges that section 92 of the Australian Constitu Constitution free trade between the states did not overrule the AWB monopoly. So a period of enforced regulation began. But the authorities were mindful of how this might affect deliveries into some of the stock feed companies. The bulk handling systems didn't cater very well to supplying the growing domestic market. There was a heavily unionised workforce that limited logistics both at country and export level. I can remember there was one condition where the uh, people were allowed to sort of spend 10 minutes to put their work boots on. The AWB set up a grower to buy system that allowed the independent, grain, uh, the independent storage operators to continue to receive wheat for the grower, from the grower, 
The AWB paid the grower via the AWB pool with some adjustment as there was no export cost component. Later, the domestic market was deregulated and then export wheat in containers. Finally, full deregulation of the bulk wheat export and domestic markets. During this time and since deregulation, innovation and competition have led to many changes to the handling and pricing of grain. The specific drivers of the recent changes include increased production of grains worldwide. We need to produce and handle grain as efficiently as possible to compete with both the traditional and emerging world production areas such as the Black Sea countries. Lower shipping freights have meant many traditional Asian markets are within easy reach of all our major producers and exporters. Yields and harvesting capacity have increased sharply. The need for improved handling capacity is vital. As receival capacity increases, the harvest period has been shortened and the risk of bad weather damage in the crop has been reduced. Improvements in wheat quality and the ability of mills to substitute and blend has allowed other exporters into the market. Demand for grain in containers has grown steadily to satisfy export markets that prefer to buy in smaller parcels or want specific grades. The general desire to reduce costs is strong. Rail and road are competing to secure as much of the freight as possible. The excess capacity of upcountry storage, increasing on-farm storage and the excess export terminals has created fierce competition for farmers' grains. This has resulted in a strong basis with our prices above world values. The world market for grain is something the Australian farmer has to contend with, just like our manufacturing and other industries have to. The positive is the farmer now has many more options to market their grain. There are many buyers offering prices for a large variety of delivery options. Growers can, sell even, can even sell CNF if they're prepared to take the risk in the export market. Payment to the grower has been shortened from 30 days end of month to 14, seven, and in some cases two days from sale. Our current terms are seven days. This not only allows the grower to leave their marketing decisions till later, but also reduces the risk of default. Competition in the blockchain technology will make payment possible at the point of transfer. There is a credit insurance for grain deliveries that's created confidence and stability within the whole trading chain from grower to exporter. Careful consideration of who to sell to is still required. What is still important to remember is what looks like the best deal isn't always the best deal. Grain Trade uh, Australia rules and standards offer protection for all, including the farmer. There is an effective arbitration system that is much cheaper than the courts. The information flow is improving all the time and the next generation farmer is much more techno-familiar and can adapt to it. The key point around all these changes is that the grower is now in much more direct contact with the world market and can respond to the market signals. Secondly, there's been a real drive to reap efficiencies in the supply chain over the last decade. We estimate that the cost of moving grain to ship has been reduced by at least 20% due to rail, upcountry, site and port efficiencies, and even that can be negotiated lower at times. Given the strong competition for grain, almost all of these efficiency gains have been reflected in grower bids. The improvement in, com in communications is obvious to all. Farmers and buyers want access to and be able to convey information quickly. Twitter and text and other forms provide this. Thumbs and fingers instantaneously pass prices, delivery arrangements, facts and rumours such as which sites are using falling number machines, the quickest turnaround or where the best smiles are. Everyone in the delivery and marketing chain are aware of the most up-to-date information for little cost. The improvements in communications have provided so much transparency to all participants, buyers, traders, brokers, farmers. New ways of communicating and new apps are constantly emerging. The information is now out there for anyone who wants it. The information flow now requires someone to interpret it. The observation of drowning information and thirsting for knowledge is so applicable. Almost all deliveries are now are electronically available to seller and buyer instantaneously. The seller can review it themselves, discuss it with us or their broker, or ascertain the bids and options. The buyer knows what he has bought at any time. If authorised, a bank can verify stocks and be comfortable with lending against them. Bids can be altered at any time, similar to the stock market, and these can be accessed by all using the relevant app. A text may be sent to remind the delivering party what special deal there may be, i.e. for a large parcel, or a price with a limited tonnage, or to attract grain into a specific delivery point. It has become a game of chess with a very little time in between moves. Another significant change is the bank's attitude to financing stocks. No longer is it only the large grain companies that can accumulate and finance large stocks of grain. CBA have a cash and carry product that allows up to 100% of finance of the value of the grain to approved traders. 
NAB have a stock financing product, as do the other banks. This has allowed smaller players to be in the market, which increases competition for the grain. Growers are able to delay selling their grain by extending the date of their repayments with their bank. Grower brokers are offering marketing information and futures hedging, and there are at least 10 provider of pool options. Pro Pharma publish a comparison of the pool results. What is important for Kelly Grains is that that technology has, by and large, been a huge advantage for us. The new cloud-based IT system means that we have access to technology as good as the larger operators. It also means that we can communicate with our growers in a cost-effective way. Another aspect of our business is that it is often more efficient for each parts of the supply chain to focus on what they're good at and then have a commercial relationship with other parties so that so what they're not good at, instead of bringing all aspects of the business in-house. Examples of that for our business is with IT. We don't have an in-house IT department, but outsource that and can pick and choose the best provider at any given point. There are numerous trading and software packages for little cost now. Market intelligence. We outsource a lot of that too, rather than rely on a corporate overseas office. Rail and road freight services. We have commercial agreements rather than ownership or lease of physical train sets or road fleets. This makes our business much more flexible and scalable than those who have to lease trains or own trucks. These specialised services and the commercial transactions between them are happening in part due to technology, which helps the commercial transaction and makes specialisation viable, and in part due to less regulation, both in terms of grain trading as well as freight and information services. I think that the evolution to a deregulated market was a change that we had to have. Many inefficiencies were identified and many costs have been removed. There are still some certain regulations such as China responsibility in transport, AQUIS, levy collection for research and, and endpoint royalties, and possibly stock reporting. I don't believe government need to assist other than in support of the promotion of Australian grain and improve regional infrastructure such as communications, road and rail. There have been companies who have gone under and uh, been merged and some of the commodity boards weren't able to survive. Uh, we've been fortunate being been able to survive, but also to grow, and regardless of the framework or conditions. We've modelled ourselves a little bit like a willow tree swaying in the breeze, whatever breeze that is, with strong roots but flexible enough not to break in the wind. The retention of experienced and casual staff allows us to handle most problems and situations comfortably. We think this has established a firm base with our local farmers and customers over time. It also demonstrates continuity to our customers. We recognise it as those that can adapt the best that will survive and most likely succeed. Thankfully, we're small enough to be able to substitute personal oversight for dollars some of the time and can make decisions quickly without awaiting formal board approval. We base our decisions on real money. If it was yours, would you do it? Our view is that sometimes to get the task done, it is necessary to do it by oneself. For example, rather than build a new rail line or load to load uh, bulk rail, we moved our loading equipment and grain to the existing rail. This has meant some duplication of assets in some areas. The positive from this is the producer has more options. An interesting aspect around our business is that we store grain in all the BHCs that we compete with and trade and supply grain to them as well. We have a franchise arrangement with Emerald Grain, who are owned by Sumitomo Corporation and have their own country storage in a port in Melbourne. We've worked hard to match what the large traders and bulk handling companies are good at and take advantage of their challenges such as large overheads and formal structures in their decision making. We have to have the luxury of only needing to cover a small area and concentrate our efforts there. So how will the independent trader maintain their position in the grain market? We acknowledge the commercial tension that exists between buyer and seller. It doesn't have to be confrontational. We offer our farmers warehousing so they don't have to sell until they wish. We also offer growers multi-grade contracts with the option to deliver in later years if to their advantage. Growers can decide in their own time when and who to sell to. In many instances, we're providing a service. For example, we're currently installing a new grain dryer to cater for an increase in local corn production. It's an investment the grower is unlikely to make as they prefer to spend the money elsewhere on the farm. We've also expanded our cotton seed packing and containering capacity to meet the increase in production and subsequent exports. We can't predict the, pr the future. There's a quote about currency experts that there are two types. Those who don't know and those that don't know, they don't know. We acknowledge that we need to keep at the front of our competition and maintain our existing relationships with farmers and the trade. We're members and involved in all the grain associations and are active in local farmer groups. We genuinely want to support our communities and we receive the support in return. We employ local kids in their first job. 
We're managing our succession so the new exec have a full reign, but not a total reign yet. The blockchain revolution is here and we'll need to adopt this. There is a demand for identity preservation and this will create premiums and niche markets. The supply and marketing chain will continue to find more efficiency and transparency and there will be further disruption to the status quo as we know it. In fact, we think we've been disrupting it for a long time. Some participants won't survive. Our plan is to review what we're doing, embrace the change. If we can do this, we're confident we and other similar companies the size of us will keep the edge we have and will stay relevant in the grain industry. Thanks for your attention.